All right, guys, what is up? Hope all of you are doing well. So, as you can see, I changed the name of my channel to Realistic Perspective. I figure what I'm going to do with this channel, since I kind of formed a connection with, you know, a lot of the people have been watching me. And a lot of people were sending me messages like, oh, man, you make no more videos and this and that. And I like the way you explain the videos. And it's really unique. Like, I'm a unique person. So, you know, I do things differently than most people. And I'm a very... I'm a critical thinker, so I think, you know, outside of the box. And I think that a lot of people should do that, you know, especially in these times, you know. So I pretty much just want to give my insight on just, you know, a realistic perspective of life and how I think about all different types of issues in the world, like relationships, politics, um, you know, freaking race and all that kind of stuff. That's pretty much what I'm going to do. And if I buy something and I review it, I'm going to do reviews too. I'm just going to do everything, you know, pretty much just get information out there and have a discussion with the people who've been watching me and following me. Because if you think I was good with doing scooter reviews, you know, now you get to see how I am relating to issues in life. And it's just as good, just as deeper. Shout out to Dr. Dude, the one dude that comes and fucks with me on Twitch. Shout out to him, dude. So anyway, what I want to talk about first is my first video. I want to talk about, as you can see as a header, race, white, black, brown, Hispanic, yellow, orange, red, turquoise, whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? I want to give my understanding on what these mean and what they are. You know, just my whole I, my whole take on it. And it's just going to be real. You know, anything I say is just going to be real. So, first of all, what is race, right? Race does not exist, okay? There's no such thing as race, okay? There's only such a such thing as cultures, okay? Everything is derived from a culture and a specific culture or nationality in each part of the world. Um kind of breeds them to be good at specific things, right? Because it just, you know, from generation to generation, it passes on, it's in the blood, you know, it's in, it's inside of us. And every single culture has a special ability about them. And that's what makes us unique. Now, when you want to talk about race, there's the race is something that's been created to kind of divide and kind of just say, oh, those people are like this and those people are like that, right? Because if you wanted to base race off of something, why not base it off of ear size or nose, right? Or finger length, right? Or, you know, just it's it's pretty much just based off of a skin color, if you really think about it, right? For instance, like I made my own coin for it and what it's called, okay? And you heard it from me first, because, you know, I have my own original ideas, my own original ways of coining things. So, yes, I'm coining this. This is the first place you heard it from. It's me, because I see things for what they really are. It's not race. There's no such thing as race, okay? But there's a such thing as skin, right? There's no such thing as racism, but there's a such thing as skinism, right? Because if you really think about it this way, here's the best here's the best interpretation of race that I can say if it were ever to take effect and why we're just the human race, okay? If you guys, you know, this is, I'm from the old school, so an old school game I used to play is called Final Fantasy XI, right? I love that game. It was amazing, right? When you first pick your characters in the beginning, you have the option to pick a Taru Taru, Elven, Hume, or a Galka, Okay. Now, the Taru Tarus are really tiny little people. They look so cute. They look like little t Teletubbies and they have these big ears or whatever, right? They walk a certain way or whatever, but they are only small. None of them are big. None of them are, you know, they, they're just different, right? Elvins are, they look like elves, right? They have elven features. They have ears like elves, right? Hume is human, okay? They just call them, it's obvious they just named it Hume, but they're humans, right? So they look like us. They're humans. 
Galkas were big, huge dudes, like big beast looking guys or whatever, right? If I were to call something where you're distinguishing different life forms as race, that would be a good interpretation of that. Because even though it's make believe, but let's say they went further, maybe they have, you'd have to have different reproductive organs, or maybe some blood is yellow and maybe they don't breathe, you know, maybe they breathe in water, you know, they would be different races because the whole entire uh, living organism is completely different from the other. When it comes to human, we're all the same. All of our stinks. All of our blood is red when we bleed, right? All of our breath stinks when we wake up in the morning. All of our pee is yellow. The same. The only thing that makes us different is skin color. Even for black people, different grades of hair. We, I mean, we have the same kind of hair. My hair is like this. If I train it, I get waves, right? It lays down. It's just extreme curls. That's all it is. It's just really more coarse and curly. But if you straighten it, it can be just like anybody else's hair. But that's a whole nother topic. But that's how I see it. So for me, when I hear of someone that's a racist, racist I really just call them a skin picker. That's my coin that I call it. You're a skin picker. So you're saying this person is this way because of their skin. You're a skin picker. It's not a racist. It's a skin picker or a skinness, right? Now, let's get down to racism. And, and I'm a victim of it, too. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of saying race because we're so used to it. But I'm untraining myself to say race. I'm trying to say culture or what it is. Let me give you an example, right? This race was just created to divide us, right? Like back in the slavery days and stuff like that, particularly for black people, you didn't need a reason to dislike black people. It's just because they're black. You know, black people were considered animals and savages and, you know, weird, crazy people, whatever. You didn't need nothing. It was in the constitution. We were only like three fifths of a man or whatever. But fast forward to 2024, we all know that's false. Even white scientists, everybody knows that's not true. Black people are human just like everybody else, right? With that being said, you need a reason to hate somebody. You can't just hate somebody because of a skin color. There's an underlying factor that nobody pays attention to, okay? And that's culture, okay? If you are hating somebody, you're hating their culture. That's the only logical explanation. I mean, yeah, you see in the forefront of the media, black, 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 but you really hate them. So, for instance, I, I'm, I'm getting, this is realistic, okay? I'm being 100% real. I am not black. I am not African-American. I'm not uh, N-word with a G-A or an E-R. I'm none of those. You know what I am? I'm African descent. And... As of 2023, mid 2023, I'm stopping labeling myself as black because I'm not. I'm African descent. That's what I am. Okay. Realistically, I should be African. That's I know a lot of black people don't want to hear that and they don't want to identify with that. And that's cool because we're Americans. We're not, you know, African Americans because, well, the term African American is different from an actual African, you know, they call us African-American because we're descendants of Africa, even though it can be argued that there were black people when before the slaves and when the natives were here. I do believe that there were black people here. And there's a, there's a lot of arguments on that, that black people were already in America. I agree with that. But I choose to believe that I'm a descendant from Africa. I mean, with the large percentage of Africans that were brought here as slaves, I'm a descendant of Africa mixed with all kind of stuff. I mean, look at my skin, you know, most, you know, black people that were here or African descent people here, we were mixed. The slaves were mixing and having sex with all different types. We're not pure Africans. We don't even look like pure Africans, right? You go look at a Nigerian or someone from Kenya or, or Ghana or, you know, any of those places, they look like true Africans, right? But we're still African descent, right? I am no longer going to label myself as black, all right? Because let me tell you what these are. Black, white, brown, uh, yellow for Asians or red or even Hispanic and all this kind of stuff. These are 
ideological constructs, okay? This is what it's used to refer to a certain group of people and how they are, okay? When I see a white, when, okay, think about it this way. When you hear white man, if somebody says white man, what comes to your mind? We already know, white man, call, nice job, you know, this and this and that, blah, blah, blah. You know, black man, you know, I don't know, rapper, you know, gangster, ghetto, hood, all this kind of stuff, right? Asian people, um, arrogant, smart, good at math, you know, Hispanic people or, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, brown people, uh, immigrants, uh, illegals, uh, stuff like that. You know, and then there's some positive notes about them, too. But is that necessarily true? No, it's just it's just an ideological construct. It's what has been idolized and turned into a norm. All right. You can have somebody who's black who likes all different types of cultures. You can have somebody who's white that likes all kind of cultures. You can have somebody who's Asian that's not arrogant or who's not good at math. You can have somebody who's black, who's not a thug or a gangster, never committed a crime in his life, right? We're sucked into not thinking for ourselves and just going by what the society is telling us that we are, but you are who you say you are, okay? So, for instance, when we see a white man, we need to stop thinking about what determines a white man, what the society has created, okay? Okay? And saying, oh, he's white, so he's racist. Oh, he's white, so he has a good job. Oh, he has white privilege. You don't know that. Just like you don't, just like white people don't want you to say that to them, black people don't want to be called um, thugs and gangsters and criminals and all that. Make it fair, right? So going back to what I said earlier, it's about the culture that you probably don't like, right? Um, how white people speak. Um, how they live, where they live. Maybe that's something you don't identify with and you don't like, right? Same thing with black people. You know, black people live a certain way. Black people talk a certain way, hip hop and all this. Maybe that's what you don't like, okay? But here's the thing about America. In America, you the, the idea is you could be whatever you want to be. You can gravitate towards whatever culture you like. That's the freedom we have in America. Right. So you can have somebody who's um, Hispanic. Right. Who loves um, Japanese culture, who loves anime, who loves uh, Japanese art and maybe samurai swords and stuff like that. That's what he likes. OK, here in America, we're taught to look, do whatever we want to be free. So if that Hispanic person wants to dabble in um Japanese culture, that's his his or hers right. He can do that. He can like that. And he wants he, that's what he chooses. Right. Same thing with somebody who's black. Maybe they may like Asian culture. Maybe they may like white culture. Why can't they like that? Why can't they listen to rock music and classical music and stuff like that? Right. If, if you are what you like in whatever company you keep. Right. So. This is just my view on these kind of things. You know what I mean? When it comes to culture, that's how we should identify ourselves with our cultures, our background. What, you know, like when you see someone white, instead of calling them white, what are you? Are you German? Right? Are you Scottish? Right? There's different, you know, there's white people from the Netherlands, there's France, you know, there's Hungary. You know, there's what what, you know, poor, uh, uh, what is it? Um, damn, I forgot the name of that. Uh, Pol Polish, you know, Irish. There's different types of white. When you go to black, what are you, African, Jamaican? Right. What do you what do you identify as? What, you know, every single race or uh, brown or white. It's not the color that defines them. It's the culture. It's where they come from. Right. So let me put another thing into perspective. Right. The ghetto. Right. Ghetto. Everybody says, oh, I don't like hood people from the ghetto and this, the, you know, the ghetto, this, the ghetto, this old oh, black ghetto, black ghetto, this black ghetto, that. True. 
black people are ghetto, right? But not all black people are ghetto. Plus, ghetto is a culture. This is what people don't understand. Ghetto is a culture and it's not exclusively black. You got white ghetto people, Asian ghetto people, Indian ghetto people, uh, Middle Eastern ghetto people. Dude, anybody can be ghetto, right? But the thing is, if you're ghetto and you like the ghetto culture, you can identify with that, right? But that has nothing to do with the color. It's what you gravitate towards, right? Because ghetto culture has its humor in it, okay? It's a certain type of humor. It's a certain type of swag, the way you walk, the way you talk, the food, all of that encompasses what ghetto means, right? And there's people who love that lifestyle, right? So the people who love that lifestyle shouldn't be uh, defined as a color, like, oh, well, you're this color, so you're ghetto. No, you got all different types of people, all different shades who are ghetto or thug or hood or whatever. Doesn't matter. You can go to other countries. People just so caught up in America, they think it's the only place on earth. You could go, bro, I've been to other countries. I've been to third world countries. You could go to certain um, areas and you could find their ghettos. There's ghettos in India. There's ghettos even in fucking Korea, even though it's really safe. You don't think they got rebels over there? Japan, you don't think they got ghettos? There's a ghetto everywhere, right? So, and here's the thing, another thing that'll cook your noodle. Those ghetto people from different races can come and meet with black ghetto people or white ghetto people and get along just great because they have the same culture. It's not about a skin color, right? So let's say for people who are not ghetto, right? Maybe, you know, a lot of people will consider them bougie. Okay, well, everybody has the right to be bougie. If you want to be bougie, be bougie. That's probably not the right way to determine it, but that's the closest thing I can think of. I'll think of something else later. But if that's who you are, that's who you are. So you got to be around other bougie people, right? Because think about it. If you were to take somebody who's bougie and put them with someone who's ghetto, it's not going to work because they have two different upbringings, two different way, views of life, right? In a more quiet neighborhood, OK, that's multiracial, not just all white, a quiet neighborhood where people live a certain type of way. The conversations, the TV shows, the music, the, the humor, all of that is different. So it's really that's what separates people from people. It's not color. It's just how they are. It's what they how they do. Like if you were to sit with somebody from a completely different uh, culture from you, and look at their TV shows, like, like for instance, like, I remember, like, I met this girl, right? And when I went to her house, right? And, you know, she, she's a white girl or whatever. You know, see, I'm even guilty of saying that she's white. You know, let's call her Irish, right? We got to stop doing that. We got to stop doing that, okay? But I have to, that's the best way to distinguish. We got to stop doing that, though. She's Irish, right? And she liked to watch the office she was crazy about the office the show the office right and i never seen it before you know most of the shows i watched were like martin and um you know fresh prince of bel-air living single a lot of black shows right it's not really black it's just we're humans you know but god you see how complicated it is it's so crazy but when we were watching that show that show was not funny to me at all. Like, it's just like a lot of sarcastic humor and all this kind of stuff, you know. And I'm just like, man, this is not funny, you know. And the reason for that is, is because I did grow up in a multi-cultural um, environment with a different cultures and different, all this kind of stuff. I did not just grow up in an all-white neighborhood or an all-black neighborhood or an all-Asian neighborhood or an all-Hispanic neighborhood. No, I Hispanics, Middle Easterns, Asians, whites, blacks, everything. So I consider myself as African descent, multicultural, not just one, because that's what America should be, right? So we're watching this show and she's just dying laughing after every single, you know, skit or whatever. And I'm just like, man, this is 
porn. Like, it's not funny to me, right? Why? Because a huge portion of my influence and culture, like my mother, like my mother's from the hood. Like my mother's ghetto. She was in projects, you know, but I wasn't from that. Like I was raised in a multicultural area that was pretty nice, you know, but I was exposed to all the different types and especially my family and a lot of them, you know, not all of them. You got some that come from like, you know, ghetto environments, some that come from more bougie, if you want to call it, or laid back areas because it's a different lifestyle. And I've adopted both of those philosophies. So being around that has, you know, kind of formed my humor and formed my thoughts and all that. But I'm not 100 percent like that. I don't I don't adopt all those philosophies and I don't agree with a lot of philosophies in ghetto culture. I don't. But a lot of them I do. And a lot of them has kind of made me what it is today because there's there's benefits to, you know, being from a ghetto culture, too. They have a lot of high values and standards and stuff, too. But then there's a lot of other ways that they think and go at that. I just can't I can't agree with. Right. But does it mean everything's wrong? No, it just means that they have a specific way of looking. Right. So by me growing up watching Martin and all this, this is what kind of formed me. Oh, Red Fox and stuff. Old school comedian Red Fox is hilarious. Like this is the kind of stuff that makes me want. And, you know, speaking of like ghetto, like people want to look at like ghetto culture is like, oh, thugs and gangsters and selling drugs. And like, no, dude, I'm gonna tell you right now, people from the hood and the ghetto are the funniest damn people you can ever encounter. Like, because like me from the ghetto, like and you from the hood, like, you can't be corny and shit. like it's I don't know how to explain it. It's not like this this corny shit. like it's like real jokes like just just roasting and bagging like you they just say the funniest shit. you'd be peeing in your damn pants because it's a lifestyle. It's like when you're growing up around that you gotta be tough. You gotta be you know you gotta have swag. You gotta be cool. You know it's not all this weak. Shit. You know what I mean? You gotta you know that's how we grow up. You know and it's kind of harder. It's a more harder environment. So that makes you you know a lot creative and just funny and just, you know, I don't know. It's really hard to explain unless if you've been exposed to it. Even I live it. I have family that lived in the hood that I, I used to go down and visit and see them and see my cousins and they were funny as shit. You know what I'm saying? Because they come from that environment. Funny, swaggy, cool, you know, not a dress good and all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And a lot of people who are not from ghetto culture, they try to be like they are, you know, but you got to take everything that comes with it. You can't just pick that and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Like, no, you got to live it. You know what I'm saying? That's why a, a, a white dude for me, like 1090 Jake or any white dude that's certified, that's grown up around, you know, you know, black people. And, you know, when should, they should just black people just consider themselves African descent and, you know, think for yourself and be who you want to be. But whatever. Black is like um, infatuated by black culture, but you lived it, right? Like Milk, Milk 74, all these. If these if these white dudes grew up around black people and grew up in the hood and, and was in ghetto culture and actually grew up in it and lived it, I wouldn't care if they said, why the f would I? I'm not offended by, I'm not offended by anybody saying that's not black. I don't care, all right? Because first of all, I don't consider myself a or African American or black. I consider myself me, African descent. Okay, I am truly an African. So, and if in case for those for those of you who don't know, Africans and African Americans aren't even the same thing. They don't even identify with black people, or whatever, because it's completely different. You know, because with black people, it's a little complicated. You know, we had the language was stripped, the culture was stripped, everything was stripped away and recreated. Right. Do you guys really think that greens like collard greens and um, neck bones and, uh, you know, chitlins and all this kind of stuff that's considered soul food? You think that's our real food? That's not our real food. That's not our real food. That all that food, that food was like what the slave master threw to the slaves. Right. So you got to kind of make a culture up as you go. So that's the food that you know, my ancestors had, they didn't have, they didn't get to sit down at a table and eat like good home cooked food because they didn't have lives. They were slaves. Right. So as time goes on, you just build off of what you know, you just build off of what was what you know. 
But in a way, and this is just being real, okay? The black, whatever black, all this black and African-American, all this black, just black in general, has been altered and recreated by the past. The real African, who you are and what you really are supposed to be, has been lost and destroyed. So your culture has been created, right? And this kind of goes back to what I was saying. Each culture um, being from different uh, countries and stuff like that have abilities, right? We notice how black black people, so-called black people, say like Malcolm X, so-called black people are really good at, you know, dancing. You ever wonder why they're so good at dancing? That comes from Africa. That comes from, because in Africa, dancing is a big thing, right? It's it's And they're really good at it. And they just move. Like you go look at some of the Africans, the way they dance. They're amazing, Right? So, you know, sports and athletics and stuff like that. That's what, and that's cultural. That's, um, that's human development from the culture, from just from Africans, how they lived and how they grow. And it becomes a part of your nature because you, you've developed a skill in doing it so much. And it just passes on from generation to generation. Every culture has that so-called Hispanics. They're just, we're just humans, but I have to put these labels, Hispanics, whites, all these, all these different cultures have special abilities that make them unique, not just black people. Right. So, you know, that's my whole take on it. So we just got to stop labeling each other white, black, um, brown and stuff like that. It's the culture. Okay. When you see someone white, start asking them. Are you white? Yeah, I'm white. Well, what are you like? Truly, what's your culture? Are you Irish? Are you Italian? Are you are you Polish? You know, this like real true. Sorry, that's my other phone going off. A real true culture of who you are and understand the culture that comes with it. You know how the Irish, you know, Irish are like. You know, they can hold their liquors really well. You know, their, their system's real good with that. Irish used to drink a lot, dude. I had this Irish homie where, dude, this dude can just drink, bro. And he's just like, yeah, so what's up, man? Like, we're chilling. I'm like, bro, you, you, you good, you good. And Irish people can drink. You know, they got that, you know, that stomach. Not to say that every other race doesn't. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? There's something special about all different cultures, right? All different types of humans, not race, different types of humans. There's something special about all of our subtypes, right? Like my hair, right? Like black people's hair, you know, black people's hair. I'm African descent, but African descent people's hair, right? When, when our hair grows, it turns into an Afro, right? Um, when all Europeans or everybody else's hair, unless if you're like from the Dominican Republic or, or stuff like that, that's kind of closely related to African descent people, the the hair is real straight. Our hair is just like an Afro because it's really curly. That's all it is. It's a bunch of hair that's very coarse and, and curly. If you straighten it, it'll look like everybody else's. But that's the uniqueness of black people. A black woman is just as beautiful as a white woman or as a uh, uh, Hispanic woman or a Latina, right? Or an Asian. Everybody has their own unique beauty. That's why black women need to just wear their natural hair, okay? If you go to Africa, there's a lot of white men that love these African women that are just natural, dude. I love a, a black woman. I love a black woman with an Afro, right? And a big ass thighs and booties and lips when I'm in the mood for chocolate. Yeah. When I'm in the mood for vanilla, I love me a white woman with blonde hair and blue eyes. When I'm in the in the mood for for Asia, you know, nice little Asian chick, nice unique eyes and unique facial structures that Asians have. Bruh, every different experience is amazing with these different um cultures, right? That's all it is. And, and embrace the uniqueness of this culture. Look at their beauty, their real beauty. Black women need to look at their real beauty. There's nothing wrong with your hair. Why are you trying to look like the white woman? That's the white woman's beauty. 
Use the black woman's beauty. You're just as beautiful as anybody else. Stop putting these perms in your hair. That's another thing. I noticed most black women put perms in their hair and it smells so bad. I was wondering, why do their hair smell so bad? And then when I, when I uh, got me an African girlfriend that was all natural, her hair didn't smell like those chemicals and that weird shit because she didn't put anything in her hair. She put her braids in, but when her braids in, out, she just let her hair be buck wild. And you know what? She's just as beautiful as any other woman. It's not about a skin color, okay? It's about your fe your features, your facial features, how your structure is. Of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but it's about the way your face is structured and all that that makes you beautiful. Dude, there's this one model who's extremely dark, like blacker than the bottom of a skillet, but she's fine as shit. Fine as shit, dude. Excuse me, I don't want to call a woman But, you know, she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. Her own natural beauty. Like I said, man, I'm keeping it as a realistic perspective with what is real, not what is um, said to be. You know, no, no bull****, not just going by what the society says and this and that. We got to get out of that, man. We got to start thinking for ourselves and seeing people for who they truly are. Right. Because anybody can identify with you. It's just your culture. And if you identify with a what a specific culture, whether it's ghetto culture, whether it's white culture, whether it's Asian culture, stop putting color on it and just be with those people. There's going to be a whole bunch of different people in each group of cultures. And then when those cultures get together, we need to sit down and explain to each other how we do our culture, how you do your culture and see if we can coexist. If we can't, then it is the way it is. But it's not about color. It's about people and what they like and what they identify with. This is how humanity is supposed to be. All right. This is real, dude. This is real, real, man. All right. So I guess that's it. You know, it's my first video. I'm going to touch on a lot of topics. All right. I'm going to touch on, you know, I want to give a video on Donald Trump, my opinion on, you know, politics, relationships, women, these women out here, the way women are dating, all this kind of stuff. You know, you guys rock with me, you know, so now you get to see me for who I really am. And, you know, I have a way of speaking, you know, I have a way of speaking and I have a way of helping people. Only only thing I've ever done in my life was help people. As you guys see from my scooter videos and all that, I'm very descriptive. You know, my videos were the most descriptive. I was giving I'm giving knowledge that nobody's talking about nothing, you know, and it's in detail. and It's the real deal. So. Now you get to hear me from a perspective on life, and then I'm going to give you the real deal. Okay, so, yeah, if you guys want to support, you know, hit the like, share it, you know, let's get it out to other people. Let's have a discussion. And you guys post in the comment uh, what you want me to talk about, and then as time goes by, we get more discussions. I want to do things that people don't do. I'm going to get I want to get on live with my with my viewers and people support me and we have a conversation. We have debates. We be interactive. I'm going to be interactive like I'm the real deal. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, let me know what you guys uh, think in the comments. And uh, now you guys know kind of how I think and where I am. And there's more to come. So appreciate you guys. You know, shout out to, you know, a couple of people who rock with me on Twitch. I'll be making another video on another topic after hope you again keep your family tight hope you guys are doing well hope you guys are staying positive always stay positive i've been through a lot in my life I, i'm gonna you know say some motivating words motivating videos because you know i know how it is man i've been through so if anybody who's been stressed and depressed and all that let me know let's talk to it together because i actually care so yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Deuces.